Umberto, the ghost of Valenti, August 14, 1891, August 11, 1922, was a Sicilian-born New York City gangster and prominent member of the D'Aquila crime family during the 1910s. He is frequently confused with Rocco Valenti, a Camorra gunman of the same era. Career Valenti was born in Barcelona Pozzo di Gatto, Sicily and immigrated to America in 1910. After settling in the Lower East Side of New York, he joined the Mafia family led by Capo di Tutti Capi Salvatore di Aguila. He was said to have been the shooter in the May 1914 murder of Di Aguila's chief rival, Italian Harlem mobster Fortunato Lomonti. After this successful hit, Valenti became known as Di Aguila's chief assassin. By the beginning of Prohibition, Valenti was considered one of the best gunmen in New York. He was suspected in at least 20 murders. During this period, Umberto Valenti had run afoul of his boss, Salvatore Di Aguila, and was one of 12 men, including Giuseppe Morello, Ignazio Lupo, Ciro Terranova and others marked for death. Valenti fled to Sicily for a time. Upon his return to America in January 1922, Valenti attempted to make amends with Di Aguila by eliminating his chief rival, Vincenzo Terranova. Valenti vs. Masria On May 7, 1922, the boss of the Morello Terranova crime family, Terranova, was killed in a drive-by shooting near his E. 116th Street home. Valenti was believed to have been personally responsible. Mere hours later, Terranova's underboss Silva Tagliagamba was fatally wounded in Lower Manhattan by Valenti and gunmen working for him. The next day, Valenti and some of his men attacked the new boss of the rival Terranova family, Joe Masria. Valenti found Masria and his bodyguards on Grand Street, within a block of police headquarters. The New York Herald reported that, when the fight was ended, the gunman had shot four men and two women, but had not harmed each other. Masria tossed his pistol away and was arrested while fleeing the scene. On August 9, 1922, Masria walked out of his apartment at 802nd Avenue and was rushed by two armed men who opened fire on him. Masria ducked into a store at 82nd Avenue with the gunman in pursuit. They shot out the front window and shot up the inside of the store. The gunman fled across 2nd Avenue to a getaway car idling just around the corner on E. 5th Street. The car was a Hudson Cruiser. The gunman jumped on the running boards as the car sped west on E. 5th Street towards the Bowery, guns blazing. The gunman then plowed through a crowd and shot randomly at the blockade, wounding six men. Masria survived the incident and was found by police in his upstairs bedroom shell-shocked. He was sitting on his bed dazed, with two bullet holes through his straw hat, which he was still wearing on his head. The incident gained Masria new respect among gangsters as, the man who can dodge bullets and his reputation began to rise as Diaguilas began to wane. Murder 48 hours later, on August 11th, Umberto Valenti attended a meeting in a cafe at the corner of 2nd Avenue and E. 12th Street. Accounts differ as to who was there. Masria's key ally Giuseppe Morello was often said to have been present. Apparently realizing his life was in danger, Valenti burst outside as the bullets began flying. An eight-year-old girl standing nearby was wounded. Valenti managed to make it on the running board of a passing taxi before collapsing mortally wounded. The Herald stated, Valenti, said to be strong in his hatred of Masria, was killed coldly and with as little compunction as one would swat a fly. Gangland lore had long held that his killer was none other than Charles Lucky Luciano. Just after this incident, Giuseppe Masria began being referred to as Joe the Boss. References Further reading David Critchley, The Origin of Organized Crime in America, The New York City Mafia, 1891-1931, New York, Routledge, 2008, ISBN 0-415-99030-0, updated in The Informer, January 2012.